morning, FCC family. Good morning. It is so good to see everyone here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Whether you are joining us online or, or here in our wonderful sanctuary, please let us lift our voices together and share our opening sentences found in your bulletin. This is the day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. All right, as we get started, I want to shout out our wonderful worship team, our director of music, Julie Morgan, our accompanist, David Salyers, the incredible FCC Choir, the director of our children's ministry, Reverend Karma Cloud, our lead teacher, Seba Nietzsche-Muta, our ushers today, Reverend Heather, Bob, and Saya, and a special thank you to Dillis Burke, who assembles the communion bags for us every first Sunday of the month. And thank you to the young man who brings our service to the world, Matthew McDonald. And finally, helping with the audio and so much more, Michael Harney. Let's give them all a round of applause. <laughs> and at this time, we'd like to turn your attention to the green connection card that's in your bulletin. We have moved away from our QR code, and we are back to the one-stop shop for sharing your prayers and your contact information with us, the green connection card. And we especially encourage first-time visitors to register with us, as we would love to send you a note of welcome and greeting during the week, and we assure you that this is a very safe thing to do. All the cards will be collected by the ushers during offertory time. And this week, uh, we are still in the yellow zone regarding COVID, so masks are optional, but we will continue to be physically distanced, and we ask that you please refrain from close congregating in the narthex after worship. <coughs> and finally, children are always welcome in worship, and we have different options for children of different ages. If your child is four or younger, they're welcome to go to the child care room, which is located upstairs next to the Sunday school classroom. If your young one just needs a moment of quiet during the worship, there's a room off the narthex called the parents' room. If you need help finding either location, an usher can show you. And all children are invited to join Reverend Karma and Miss Seba on the steps for the children's moment. And then children five and over are invited to join our Sunday school up upstairs during worship. We are so glad that you are here. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus the Christ. Good morning, beloved FCC family, on this third Sunday in the resurrection season of Easter, and it feels like resurrection outside as the flowers are bursting and the trees are blooming. It is a beautiful morning, and we are glad that you are sharing it with us. For those of you who are joining us for the very first time, welcome. And we hope that while you are here, you experience an encounter with the living God, for that is truly why we gather. And we invite you to take a look at the folks who are sharing the pews with you, for the members and friends of this church are truly the ministers of this church. So if you have a question or a need that arises during worship, please reach out to someone nearby or to one of our ushers, for we are all here to serve one another. Friends, we gather this morning in a spirit of celebration, of resurrection, surrounded by rebirth and renewal in the world and in our hearts. And we welcome the spirit of the risen Christ as we open our hearts and minds here for worship. For we gather together as seekers, not for answers, but for wisdom. Not for doctrine, but for a way of life, inspired by the radical love of Jesus the Christ. So let us be together now in a spirit of sacred and holy worship. Please stand as you are able for our call to worship. Now is the time to sing, to sing the good news of God. Who awakens us with God's embrace, who surrounds us with joy and light. Now is the time to offer praise to God, in every place, with every voice. To rejoice in the one who leads us through each moment, with a gentle hand and a word of hope. Now is the time to join all creation in extolling God from the depths of the sea to the farthest galaxies. We will sing the good news of Easter. We will rejoice in the God who loves us.
ask that you please remain standing for our physically distanced passing of the peace. And my cup runneth over. We have the entire choir to help with the physically distanced passing of the peace this morning. And I would also like to call forward a man who helps with our youth program, who has done so much for our church, Michael Brown. Michael Brown, if you would come forward and help me lead the passing of the peace. Please give Michael a huge round of applause. He has no idea what else is going to do on it. He's such a good sport. All right. If you haven't experienced the joy of the physically distanced passing of the peace, we're going to review the motions one time. And we start with one hand is waving. Two hands are waving. And then we bring it into the heart. Then we open up our arms wide. And then a FCC hug. Amen. Amen. All right. And please face the center. <laughs> there we go. We got that. Soak in those beautiful faces. One hand wave. Two hands are waving. Bring it into the heart. Open your arms. FCC hug. Amen. Amen. And now, first few rows, please face the back few rows. One hand wave. Wave it fast. Two hands wave. Bring it into the heart. Open your arms. FCC hug. Amen. Amen. Let's give Michael one more round of applause. <laughs> and you may be Is this a watermelon? No, what is it? 
What's it a painting of? Pizza. You got it. It's pizza. You like pizza too. We all. And you like pizza too. Why? What? <laughs> that's right. That's right. And then there's another favorite food. Who loves? Does anyone know this food? Swedish food. <gasps> So the question is, do you love, do you love God as much as you love this pizza and this fish? As much, yes. <laughs> and the bigger question is, do you love God more than this food and this fish? Do you love God more than this food and this fish? Oh, oh, oh. Do you love God more than this food and this fish? <laughs> well, what if I told you, what if I told you this? <laughs> You're on her, silly. <laughs> what if I told you that food is God and God is food? God is the food that feeds us. And it's our faith in God that provides food to us, to our bodies, and makes us feel all these fun feelings, like, mm, pizza, oh my goodness, I'm just going to die, it's so good. <laughs> Look, this food brought Elias out the woodworks. He wasn't even down here, but he saw all of it. So, <laughs> so clearly, you see the power of food in our lives. It makes us feel really happy. Any other feelings? What do you feel when you have, when your parents or someone you know has made a really great meal? And you're ready to eat. Hungry? Okay. Hungry, but after you eat, how do you feel? Are you hungry anymore? No. What do you feel? I feel like full. Yeah. Full. Full of food. Full of love, I imagine. Full of gratitude to the person who made the food. Yes. Full of grace. Full of grace, of course, Elias. Bring it in. So let's take a moment to give thanks for all the ways in which God shows up in our lives, especially when we eat together, when we break bread together and take communion through the food that is God, the food of our lives. Thank you for the grace for the goodness, for the fullness, for the family, for the fun that, that is created when we come together around a good meal. Amen. And with that, I also want to remind our families who are here with children that today, at after service, you are invited to join us for our first post-pandemic family fun play date where we will have a little coffee hour of our own and play some board games and meet each other and get reacquainted with one another. So I hope you can join us. Thank you. us as our own breath, 
inspiring us, sustaining us, and filling us with your grace. And so surrounded by your love, we lift up to you all who suffer in mind or body or spirit. And we ask for your healing grace. This morning, we especially pray for Stella's brother, Aaron, who is in treatment for prostate cancer, for Willia's brother-in-law, Keith, who is having complications with diabetes, and for her mother, who is living with dementia. God, in your mercy. We pray that Kristen's godson pass his high school equivalency exam and gets a job. God, in your mercy. We pray for Sarah and Angela, who both have COVID this week. We pray for Nick's girlfriend, Kaylin, who had brain surgery, who will have brain surgery this week. May it be successful. May her recovery and healing be smooth. God, in your mercy. And Holy One, we offer prayers of thanksgiving for John as he recovers from his stem cell transplant so successfully. God, in your mercy. Holy One, even as we lift up our prayers here, the prayers of the world are coming to you. And they are coming to you from so many war-torn places. This morning we continue to pray as war rages in Ukraine, and we pray for all who are surrounded by trauma, hunger, terror, and death. We pray for safe harbor for those who are fleeing the country, and protection for those who are remaining, and courage for those soldiers and civilians who are fighting so valiantly for their country. In the midst of all of this, we ask for the support, compassion, and courage of leaders around the world. And we pray for the retreat of war. We pray for the restraint from violence. We pray for protection for all people. And we pray for peace. God, in your mercy. Holy One, whenever two or more are gathered in your name, you are there. And so you are here with us today, healing us, inspiring us, and gently redirecting us so that we might see the world as you do and love it with your love. And so at this time, we now offer aloud whatever joys or concerns rest on our hearts this day. God, in your mercy.
And now it is time for this morning's announcements. And we have a few exciting ones this morning. This afternoon at 3 p.m., we will celebrate the ordination of our very own Jack Kafari. Jack has been a longtime member of FCC. He is the leader of our Monday night Bible study, and he is a beloved part of the FCC family. He is currently serving as the interim pastor at Hallworth Congregational Church, and this ordination is a very special milestone on Jack's journey of ministry. The ordination will be held here in the sanctuary at 3 p.m., and everyone from FCC is welcome to participate. And once again, we remind everyone to fill out the green connection card in your bulletin, whether you are a longtime member or a first time visitor, it matters that you are here. And if you are new to us, we especially ask that you fill out a card with an email address so that we can send you a note of welcome and greeting during the week. And now we have not one, we have two FCC Spotlights. begin with Jose Ortiz. Good morning, everyone. I am honored, ecstatic, and grateful to announce that we have placed the fourth annual FCC Trivia Contest on the calendar. May 20th, Friday, May 27th. This has been a very successful event. Uh, the first two years were really great, and then, you know, COVID hit, and then things kind of got shut down. And here we are, as we try to get back to normalcy. Uh, I'm hoping that this <coughs> event can be one of uh, one of many steps uh, back to, to normalcy, as I was saying. We're gonna have it in the Guild Room uh, Friday, May 27th. Um, $10 per person. We're having using it as a fundraiser for the church. If you can't afford the $10, we still want you to be there anyway uh, to have a great time. Um, those of you who may not know, I am a professional trivia host. I chose trivia contests every week, and I can guarantee that you're going to have a great time. We're going to be getting into trivia about sports, history, mo movies, literature, science, geography, basically everything you can think of. There's going to be uh, trivia for all age groups, uh, all skill levels across so many different categories. This is going to be an event uh, that will be hopefully fantastic and you won't want to miss it. Um, the way it's going to work is uh, somewhere, at some point in the middle of the week, we're going to send out an email blast for you to sign up uh, Just and, and you can sign up through that way. If you're really anxious and chomping at the bit, you can just talk to me after church today and I'll take your name and your email address and I can send you the email blast directly. So that way you don't have to, or I can call you however you want to do it. <laughs> you can show up the day of and pay in person as well. Um, we just really just want you to be there. We want to have uh, start getting the congregation or continue to get the congregation back together. Um, if you're a family, you can compete as a family. If you're a couple, you compete as a couple. Uh, but if you're going to sign up by yourself, what we'd like to do is have some randomized teams. So that way we can encourage congregation. Uh, encourage people to speak to different people that maybe they don't speak to in the congregation every day and also discourage some formation of super trivia teams out there uh, if you know who you are. Um, so like I said, uh, Friday, May 27, 7 p.m. At the, at the Guild Room. It's going to be about an hour and a half, two hour night. There's going to be some prizes. Um, and uh, that's it. Love to see you there. Yes, you can bring a friend. Yeah, it's not definitely not only open to FCC, please. Listen, it's a fundraiser for the church, so the more bodies we can get in there, the more money we can raise for the church. Yes. During the first two years, we raised over $2,000 uh, for FCC, so um, we would love to start uh, just getting back together and having fun together as a church and as a congregation. Thank you all so much. I hope to see you Friday 27th. <laughs> And now the one, the only, Deb Duhamel. Good morning, everyone. Unfortunately, I have to use notes. 
<laughs> Make me look bad, Jose. Make me look bad. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Deb Duhamel, and I represent the um, hospitality ministry here at the church. Um, I am also going to talk about food today. So first, I have to say thank you to everyone who helped out for Easter Sunday for our first post-COVID coffee hour outside. It was amazing. I got so many coffee in the coffee room, so thank you, thank you, thank you. So the consensus of the worship team going forward is that we really want to continue to have coffee hour outside. The warm weather is here now. Um, I think we're past the snow. Um, I don't think we have to deal with that. Um, it's really the safest way for us to gather, to have our fellowship together, and it's a great way. We have so much foot traffic that goes by outside the church, and we've gotten um, a few members just from people walking by. Oh, what's going on there? Have come into church church the next week, and we really want to continue that ministry. So it's really a good way to attract um, new folks. So um, Before the pandemic, many of you graciously helped me um, in doing coffee hour, but let's face it, um, it really takes some work, um, and we really miss coffee hour. So I'm looking for volunteers for a few things. Um, early morning setup, maybe being here about 45 minutes before church, setting up our canopy, setting up some tables, um, a few long tables, and then people to help me with coffee hour, um, to host coffee hour, so you might bring a plate of cookies or some fruit or some veggies. Um, you don't have to make coffee, that will all be taken care of. I'm always here to help, you'd never host alone. So um, we're really looking for some volunteers because it's really been a handful of people that have been doing it. Um, and I don't want to burn those people out, to be honest. So it's a great way also of meeting um, other folks. Um, there's a lot of faces I see here that I don't know. And I would love to interact with a lot of people and get to know you better. So if you are um, willing to help out, if you would just see me after church, and let me know, I'll take your name and your information. There is gonna be something in the um, newsletter coming out. So um, I hope that I can count on you all. And who knows, maybe we'll have pizza, some coffee hour too. <laughs> Whether it's coffee hour or the choir, it truly takes all of us to be the FCC community, the beloved community, that we strive to be. And one way that we can share our generosity and support the ministry together is through financial donations to the church. And there are several ways that we can do this. You can go through the, the FCC giving page on our website or use the QR code on the back of your bulletin. You can use the Vanco mobile app or text your gift. All information can be found on our website, fccmontclair.org. Thanks again for your generosity. Scripture reading today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 to 19. Listen for the wisdom of God. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was, it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, 
No. He said to them, Cast a net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some fish that you, uh, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, uh, Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Jesus, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. May God's wonder be revealed to us through the mystery of these words. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I love the smell of a charcoal fire. It makes me think of camping with my family when my mom would cook burgers over our little portable grill. I catch a whiff of that smoky warmth and I remember being in college, walking with friends past the street vendors in Little Italy during the San Gennaro feast. They were cooking sausage and peppers and my mouth waters just thinking about it. Once again, when I smell that fire, I'm a carefree child or a giddy freshman, safe, happy, and hungry. Smells can transport us. They seem to bypass all kinds of memory thoughts and go straight to memory feelings. It's not so much that I remember as I am there. I am there. Our scripture story this morning takes place around a charcoal fire. It's been a couple of weeks since that strange and thrilling Sunday when the disciples found the empty tomb, since Jesus first appeared to them as the risen Christ in the upper room, since Thomas doubted and then believed. Those were some world-shaking, life-altering days for Jesus of friends. How to even process this? How to make sense of it? What now? What next? There's no real blueprint for life after resurrection. So this morning, they are making a stab at normal. They are back on the boat, doing their fisherman thing, just like they did before all this started. But frankly, it's not going very well. Until someone on the shore shouts to them to put their nets down on the other side of the boat and give it a try. And they do. 
and their nets nearly burst with fish. And Peter suddenly recognizes the man on the shore and jumps into the water and scrambles his way onto the beach. And there is Jesus cooking up a little breakfast, some fish and some bread around a charcoal fire. Now there's so much to unpack in this moment. So much symbolism. Yes, 153 fish must mean something. And there's a lot of theology, certainly. But also, so much feeling. Complicated feeling. For the smell of that charcoal fire must have reminded Peter of other fires he shared with Jesus. Other meals. Happier times. But it also triggers memory of a fire just a week or so before. On a Thursday night. In the courtyard in front of Pilate's palace when everyone was looking at him and accusing him, and he just stood around that charcoal fire warming his hands and betraying his friend. Three times, Peter denies he even knows him. Smells can transport us, and not always where we want to go. For Peter's relationship with Jesus is complicated. I think it always was. Peter was the guy who, who spoke before he thought, who acted impulsively, who so often missed the point Jesus was trying to make. But he was also the first one to drop his nets and follow Jesus, the first ones to defend him, to swear his love and his loyalty up until that night. And now he's sure he's lost Jesus' love forever. And he's humiliated and ashamed. And he feels completely unworthy. How could Jesus ever forgive him for what he did? How could he forgive himself? But when he sits down with Jesus around that fire, Jesus doesn't shame him or call him out or tell him how he failed. He welcomes him. He wishes him peace. And he fixes him some food. You see, Jesus had come looking for Peter, and he knew he'd find him back on the water, back to his old life with its empty hopes and empty nets. But he wants Peter to know that nothing he did on that awful Thursday night could ever disqualify him from his love. I can imagine Jesus asking, did you really think I didn't know who you were when I called you? I knew you better than you know yourself. So stop thinking in terms of scarcity, what you didn't do, your faults, your limitations, and accept the life I'm offering you, abundant life, filled with more possibility, more hope, more promise than you could ever imagine. Look at all these fish, for God's sake. You are capable of so much more than you know. And in an act of deep reconnection, Jesus asks Peter if he loves him three times. One time for each denial that Peter gave. And while Peter gets visibly more uncomfortable each time, Jesus asks the question, I believe Jesus was letting him see that there is no distance, no disconnect, no failure that is stronger than the love they share. You see, we are not defined by our worst moments. We are defined by by our willingness to love, to give love, to spread love, and yes, to receive love. And so he hands, as he hands Peter a, a warm meal, he also gives him a mission. Feed my sheep. Nourish the souls. Share the love. Bring my people together and remind them of all that I taught them. To welcome the stranger. Forgive extravagantly. Heal the sick. Care for the least of these. Love your enemies. That's why I called you. This is the life you are made for. Drop your empty nets and feed my people. Now it's easy to see this mission metaphorically. And Jesus was a master of metaphor. And feeding can mean so many things, it's true. But as we've seen all through Jesus' ministry over and over again, when he really wants to make a point, he feeds people. Literally. For those of you raised by Italian mothers, or Jewish, or Greek, or Russian, or Irish, or in my family, a Sicilian husband, and I know we can go on and on, you know that sometimes the very best way to say I love you 
is by piling someone's plate high with food. For some of us, it says more than words can say. And Jesus did a great imitation of a Jewish mother. His first miracle was making sure there was good enough wine at the wedding. And later he takes a few crusts of bread and a couple of fish and turns it into a feast for thousands. And he breaks all the rules of the table. And he eats with those who no one else wanted. He shuffles up those place cards and he moves the big wigs to the end and invites the little one to take their place at the head. It was his signature move to show what it meant to live in the kingdom of God. And it is almost always around a table. On the night before he died, when he finally told his friends that he loved them enough to lose his life, he gathered them together for a last meal. For Jesus' food broke down all our barriers and invited everyone to pull up a chair. It transformed enemies into friends and healed old hurts. Don't believe the lie that we live in a world of scarcity, he told them. In Mama God's kitchen, no one goes hungry. And there is always more than enough to share. And he doesn't just want them to know this. He wants them to feel this. Every time they break bread together, he wants them to be there. Because he is. And so he asks us to do the same. Whenever we eat or drink... Whenever we gather around a table, he wants us to do this in remembrance of me. Jesus wants us to let the taste and smell and feel of food transport us to a place where we feel most loved, most cherished, most known. A place where our failures and faults and limitations do not define us. Our ability to love does. This simple sacramental meal is an outward sign of an inward, visible love of God. It takes the most ordinary things we can find, bread and juice, and turns them into a feast of connection, of forgiveness, of redemption. It's a little dress rehearsal here for how we are called to live out there. Because God has seen us for the hot messes that we are, and still feeds us, and still calls us to feed each other, to pile each other's plate high with food and love, to keep practicing those radical table manners of grace. And whether we share it in a sanctuary, or around a kitchen table, or a charcoal fire, it is our chance to answer Jesus' question, Do you love me? May it be so. Amen. Amen.
table of bread and wine is now to be made ready. It is a table of company with Jesus and all who love him. It is a table of sharing with the poor of the world, with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth, for which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, those who have much faith and those who would like to have more, those who have been here often and those who have not been for a long time, those who have tried to follow Jesus and those who may have fallen a little short. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. And in response to that extravagant invitation, we reply with a great thanksgiving. For God is with you. And also with you. Open your hearts. Our hearts are open to God and to one another. Let us give thanks to the giver of all gifts. It is good and right to give God our heartfelt thanksgiving and praise. And let us pray. Holy One, God of love, our source and our fulfillment, you create all things, and in you we live and move and have our being. You made us in your image, and even though we turn from you again and again, you call us to yourself. In every age, you promise liberation. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace a people as your own to rear them in your way of compassionate love, a life of rebirth and hope, a new spirit, a new family. And so in that new spirit, we offer our thanks for all the ways you transform our lives as we join with our family of faith and raise our voices with all creatures of earth and heaven as we say our great hymn of praise. Holy, 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 holy God of power and light, the whole, the whole universe shines with your light. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. My friends, this is a story which belongs to all of us. And so I invite you to join me in telling it anew. I will speak a line. I invite you to share the line back to me. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks to God, he gave it to them, saying, and after giving thanks to God, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. For Christ has died. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ will come again. As the members of the church are truly the ministers of the church, I invite you to please raise your hand in a sign of blessing so that we may consecrate the elements together. Come now, O Christ, bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, forever bound to us in promise and mystery. Breathe your spirit upon this bread and upon this cup. Let them become for us the sign and seal of your love, healing, redeeming, making us whole. And through them let us together become for you your body, loving the world as God loves, serving its people as God wills, and always being transformed until we and all humanity resemble the one whose meal we now share. May this simple meal bring us into union with you, for it is through the broken bread that we participate in the body of Christ. And it is through the cup of blessing that we participate in the new life which Christ brings. Amen. Amen. You may lower your hands. Look, the bread of heaven is broken for the life of the world, the gifts of God for all people of God. 
In remembrance of the extravagant hospitality of Jesus, our communion table is an open table. All are welcome, including children of all ages, people of all faith and status. For no doubt is too strong, no faith too weak to come to the feast that God sets before us. This morning as you entered, you were given a bag with communion elements in it. We ask that you remove them now. And as you take your bread from the bag, please lift it up as we say, this is the bread of life given for you. You may eat the bread. Now please remove your cup, remove the top, and hold it as we say, the cup of blessing poured out for you. And you may drink the cup. share our prayer of thanksgiving after the meal. Let us pray. Holy God, in gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people, because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. Let us become heralds of your new kingdom. Amen. August of, of last year, our family's been on a very difficult journey as my husband John was diagnosed with a very aggressive non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And he had a very intense chemotherapy throughout the fall, and I was able to help take care of him, but also continue to do my work here with a lot of help from the amazing team that we have. Unfortunately, in January, it spread to his central nervous system, and that required a much more intensive caregiving on my part. And it was sort of an emergency, an unexpected situation. So very, very quickly, I had to turn things over to Reverend John and to this community while I was on medical caregiver leave, helping John get well. And John did get well. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Through the, the expert medical care, the powerful prayers from this community that surrounded him, by March, the cancer was gone from both his body and from his brain. <laughs> So that was an amazing moment. Uh, the next step was a stem cell transplant. Some folks know it as a bone marrow transplant. And he went into the hospital on April 12th. Uh, they told us to expect him to be there at least a month. The man is coming home tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. He has been unbelievable in this thing. We were prepared for the absolute worst. And at every turn, his strength, God's love, your prayers, Okay, and the doctors have had to really, really do well. So I was thinking I'd be taking my next medical leave like in two weeks, and instead it's happening tomorrow. Uh, we just got word, literally he texts me on the way in, it's definitely tomorrow. Um, so uh, I am going to be go. we don't quite know what this means. We, we don't think it's going to be as intense as when I had to take care of him in January, but we simply don't know. So for the next two weeks, I am going to be on caregiver leave, and then we will know so much more by then about what the future will hold. 
but I just wanted to give so much thanks to this community, to my beloved colleague, to Julie, David, uh, Liz, Heather, everyone in this church who has stepped in uh, throughout this very difficult time. We truly feel that there is hope and there is new life happening, and we just couldn't be more grateful. So I just wanted to let you know this is where things stand now. And hopefully I will not be gone all that long, but please keep the prayers covered because, man, they are powerful. <laughs> Amen. We're going to be sending so much love to you, Reverend Ann. So many prayers. Thank you. And filled with this incredible news of this milestone on John's recovery and nourished by our time together this morning, please join me in our closing commission. The Spirit of God is truly upon us. God has anointed us to bear good news to the afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, to open the prisons of those who are bound. Let us go forth in the name of Christ to bring peace into broken relationships, healing to alienated persons, and justice into oppressive structures. Amen. Friends, our worship here and now is ended, but our service in the world has just begun. And so as we go out into this week, let us know that every time we are at a table, every time we share food with someone, we are saying, I love you. Let us find ways that we can feed and nourish the world. And as we go, let us always remember that we travel with the love of God, the peace of Christ, the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit, this day and always. Amen. 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 Thank you.